Hello, Carol Martin, welcoming you back to my studio. Today, I'm going to do a Just For Me project, sketching and watercoloring these tulips. Before I begin, though, I have to choose the way I wish to present these tulips. And since I'm trying to zero in on the parts that I find most attractive and that will give me the most watercolor practice, I'm going to use this sliced up watercolor paper that I have been using and that have seemed to be working a treat. So now I must choose the way I wish my watercolor practice to look. I'm thinking I do want some of that dark green bud down at the bottom. The question now is how much of this left tulip I want and how much of this large beauty I want to cut off because if I were to choose that I think I would have a rather ordinary composition Hmm. I'm thinking right there. So, let's tape that down. Right there. This will be the subject, of course, of my painting today. It will also be giving me some ideas about color. Not, of course, that I couldn't change them if I wanted to, but I find these pink tulips rather attractive, especially in the doldrums of winter. So, this is my subject. And here is my watercolor paper. So, let's see about the drawing. I'm just going to be using an ordinary eraser and my mechanical pencil. I like to sometimes mark these into thirds so that I can have an idea while I'm drawing about where things are. All right. Now, this drawing is not going to be the same size as this. I'm going to use it the entire page for this. So, this would be approximately the center. And now let me begin. Wish me luck. Of course, this is not exact. Let's bring this down now. The stems on the tulips are quite thick. Now let's put this one on comes in from this area.
there. I think that we will declare this our sketch. So, set aside my pencils and bring my brushes up to the top here. And at the top I have my water supply, a porcelain palette, and four brushes, my Princeton number 12 round for the background, my trusty Windsor and Newton number six, another smaller Windsor and Newton number eight, and my liner number four from Princeton also. Bring back our paints and I'm going to get my spray bottle which I forgot to bring to my table. I will be right back. Here I am and ready to begin. First I'm going to spray my paint so that it starts to become nice and juicy. I'm going to spray all of my pinks and reds, my greens, and background color. What am I thinking? Let's see, what am I thinking? Maybe a nice, nice, nice pale, super pale blue. Let's try that one. All right. I have my Viva towel ready and my painting. I'm going to begin, of course, something I prefer. A lot of people don't, but I prefer to begin with the background. So I'm going to wet, I'm going to be wetting a background area. This part is the part that takes the most practice, I believe, because when you wet your paper, you have to walk a fine line between soupy and soggy and running rivulets of water and just being spectacularly and right on the money damp. I'm going to be careful putting my painting my water on around the design because the paint will only move where there is water. So if I keep my water out of the tulip areas and the bud area and the leaf area, none of what my blue background is doing will interfere here. I'm going to be tilting and moving my paper so that I can watch to see what's happening with the water. Do not want puddles, but I do want to make sure that my water is butted up against the outline of these tulips, the stems, and the bud. Now, I'm tilting this paper and looking at the uh, paper to check for wetness. I don't want to see any buildup of running water. I want to be able to see a very mild shine of water. That means that I can paint. If the paper becomes too matte, I add just a little bit more water to that area, set up my shine from the water, and then drag it down, drag the water down so they can soak into this nice paper. And that's the job of the water, to make a watercolor. 
to have it soak into this lovely cotton paper. And I'm going to have to wait a minute because this is a, just a titch wet, I think. So, while I'm waiting a moment, let me go for some of my blue paint. I'm going to add water to it. Make it nice and juicy. In fact, I might just give it a quick tap with my Viva. Well, here we go. Move that paint around, and this is what a nice big brush does, it is helpful. Moving that paint around, because remember we're adding more water because this is wet paint. So we need to go right down that stem and around and around this bud. And move it up to cover this center section. And down to the corner again. And I'm going to sit here a moment and Look at this and congratulate myself for not seeing any blooms. Because if we wish to add something to this area after we've painted our tulips, we'll be free to do so. All right, we're back to the water. We need water between. And if the water is a little bit blue, because that was the blue paint that's left in the brush. That's fine. We need to get our water between these two stems. And then from the bottom up those stems. Sometimes that little tiny bit of residue of blue is helpful. It's showing us where we are with our water. But when I look at it in the light, I see that this center section is dry. So, here we go. This might or might be the way this is done. I have no idea. But, I do get the result that I'm looking for. So, I'm just going to say, oh well, this is my method. I think I'm going to stop there. Alrighty, this section seems to have behaved itself. Let's see now if we can make this section also behave itself. Some of you might be saying, well, why is she still using that big brush? And my answer is, gee, I wish I knew. But I'm not going to fix what isn't broken. And it seems to be moving nicely. So, because this brush does have a nice bendability, if that's a word. We'll declare that to be an art word. It's a nice bendability and it seems to fit my hand and make me happy to use it. Well, here it goes. Alrighty. 
let's come up here. Start to come around because I do believe we brought our water up here. Yes, we did. And even though this is a huge brush, look at the way. Look at the way this tip carries that paint and that water into these little nooks and crannies. Okay, let's water this area now. tulip. I'm checking again for the shine, but I don't want too much shine because I want some of that water to have soaked into the watercolor paper. I think I'm going to take a, a leap of faith and finish the edge of this large tulip with water, remembering that the blue will not go down into this tulip because that's where the water stops. Oops. A little carried away with the water here, so let me check it. Yes, it's still a little bit too shiny in this corner. Maybe just a quick Viva tap. Let me see. Yes, that's better. Whoops. One more. Yes, better. Okay, let's go back for our color. More water. And this seems to be behaving itself also. Oh, that gives me a nice spot to clamp my thumb down. Whoa, dark, dark, dark. Okay, what do we do now? Well, we're just going to take this and we're going to move it. And we're going to move it, move it, move it, drag it out of there. And we're going to take some and drag it back this way with the help of water to kind of blend it in. These things happen. Blend it down. And hope for the best. You notice how it's modeling a little bit in that area. Slate plans and mice and men and watercolor. Alrighty, let's go over here now. And spread our color. To our edges. Now, do you see our problem area over here? Let's see what we can do with this. Live with it is plan A. Plan B is see what we can do without making it worse. And this is the time where I'm going to beat down my OCD tendencies and declare that I might Quite happy. Oh, sorry, I put the brush in my mouth. Alrighty. Now, since this is a background, 
I am going to uh, help it to dry. Get some heat. Goodness, I wish I'd stop doing that to my keyboard. I'm going to knock it into next week sometime. It'd be very hot. Sorry that I did. Here I am back. Notice that I warmed up and dried up the back of this paper also. So let's see what we can do now with the tulips. I'm going to move them in so that you can see them. And I think I'll begin with this one. First thing I'm going to do is cover the whole back of it with a nice light wash of pink. Now, which pink shall I choose? Hmm. I'm thinking this one. This one. So on my palette, it will be this one. First one in from the beginning of the row on the top. The blue goes. And here we go. Let's have some nice pink working here now. The more water that you add, of course, to watercolor, the lighter your shade will be. Now I'm thinking this area might just do the trick. So, I'm just going to cover it with a nice wet, pale, pink. And you'll notice this paper is not wet. The only water being applied now is the water that's coming off this brush, which is a different technique than I used on the back. But it does help me, I find, it does help me to control color. Well, since that seems to be doing, why don't I just do my tulips? Why don't I just do these tulips? Having a little bit more color up here certainly is not a problem. Because if you look at the picture, there is darkness up there. And you'll notice I was able to eliminate that line by soaking it out and dragging color. There we go. Now this one's quite dark, so we're not going to be upset about this one staying dark. And that's bleeding over into the next color because we've learned that watercolor will move only into wet areas. That's why it's starting to come over. But that's just fine because after all, this is a watercolor, not a photocopy. And a little bit of white areas left. Very nice. We're going to leave the white areas. Now this puppy. Maybe 
a little more color. Yes, right down in here. And we'll come over and do this one because it should be dark also. This is the back leaf that we're just able to see. And did you notice I had a little bit of the uh, blue background color on there? And that only plays nicely with the pink and makes a little purplish color, which is very, very acceptable here. At least to me, and I'm the artist. All righty. should be a mid-range pink. We can do that. And I'm going to leave just a little hint of paper there, which is white. Paper equals white paint, since there, I don't use it in watercolor, if I can absolutely help it. As I said, this is my my interpretation of these tulips. And that's what I want there. So that's what we're going to have. Now, this puppy is looking pretty pale, so I'm going to go back and talk to him a little bit here. Or her, I guess it's a girl, it's pink. just water this area in the center here, it will allow this paint to seep into it because that's the nature of watercolor. And on the edge here, a little bit of color again. Very dark color right in there. We're going to just pop it in at the top area. And a little bit of it here. And we're going to come back up here up to this area and include a little bit here. And since this paper is kind of drying out, it's not going to be moving very much. Well, we're going to solve that problem. We just put a little tiny debbie of water right in there and allow the nature of watercolor to take its take its course. I don't like that hard line, so I'm gonna lay some water in there next to it. Let's bring it down. Now this one wants to have more darkness in here. color. I took that away. Let's put it back because when you dab your Viva down, it's going to pick up your paint. All right. This one needs to have some darkness down here at the bottom of this petal. And I'm going to bring it up along the outside. 
outside and let it meet this area up here. That little bit of blue that I just brought in from the background is working fine. And now another, another area of strong, of strong pink. In fact, I'm going to go to this color to the right of it, because it is a bit darker, and I'm going to see what this is going to do. Because this, as I said, this is our, our tulip. We can make it play however we want it to. this and let this come down. Sweep down this way. And this one almost looks like it's sweeping over because of the fold of the Petal. So we'll put the fold in. And we'll leave a little room for that green right there. Now a little smidge more darkness here. And Lots more. A darker shade here. We want to soften and drag and fill up an area. Put our water down. Almost clear water from our water bottle. I have to decide whether I hate that line down here. But maybe we'll decide that we like it after we uh, have some green on there. Oops, it's too, too dark, too wet up there to be darkening the way we want it to. Nope, not going to do it. Absolutely, categorically, it is not going to do it, no matter how much I want it to. Well, there, gotcha. Alrighty. Now, Let's see what we can take away. That line right here. Right. And now let's go down here because I believe we have the tiniest, tiniest bit of pink to deal with right here. Because this bud is just beginning to open, revealing some of the color of this tulip. Now, let's see where we are now. I think it's time for some green, don't you? Looks like a fairly expressive green. What will we do? What will we do for greens? About this one. Oops, no, not happening. No, don't like that one at all. It's artificial. That's St. Patrick's Day green. Don't want it. How about some of that one? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We're using this one. Alrighty. And then maybe. 
maybe some of this one to lighten the load a little bit. And always on my planet, just a touch of pink because that's the color in the flowers. Why? I probably saw a teacher do that and I like the idea. So, let's start up here. Is this dry enough? Yes, I believe it is, but let's make sure. Now I'm using some water just along the edge of this green to give it some place to move if it so desires. Hey, listen, it's watercolor. The water seeks its own level and it's going to do its own thing. Now, it's green. I'm not tickled with it, but it's there. Alrighty, we'll be back to that one. Alrighty, let's see if we'll have a little bit better. this area. This is the darker side of the stem that I'm working on now. Yeah. 
and almost all, almost all of this bud is dark because of the newness. Now I'm just going to bring that one right down there. here. And you'll notice how when you're realizing that your composition isn't doing what it needs to do, you just fix it. Alrighty. There we go, right down over there. soften up the edge of that darkness. Use a little of our lighter shade right in here. Ah, yes. And you'll notice the way this is moving. I'm quite happy with that motion. See if we can get some on the other side of this stem now. A little scrubbing motion to kind of break that line where the darker green stopped. A little bit. Now, what we have here is a bloom, but there are times when blooms do not exactly put me off. So let's see what happens if we add a little of our darker green to this and leave the bloom there. here. That is rather a strong, strong line there. Let me see if I can do what we need to do here. Just let it go this way a little bit. too happy with it. Give it the Viva tap. I think we need some more of our lighter green. Add it here. Maybe here. Just a little bit here.
just going to fix this area where the stem enters and is hidden under there and where this stem enters this tulip. I want to give it a little bit more of a cupped shape. see is in real need of a little bit of depth of color. This whole area needs to be darker, so we're going to do that right now. Some of our very dark in here. Dark, dark, dark back in here. I think I'm going to leave this one alone now. And now we have to add our bits of darkness to this one. And you notice as we go along, Get more willing to be bold and make it our tulip. This is the one that is behind. We were almost I almost neglected it. I think that one stays. This needs to be very dark. We might even need to leave, leave a little touch of green included there to really bring out that darkness. Well, I do believe we're getting close to the end of this practice. I do hope that you have enjoyed it. And if you have, if you have learned anything or decided that, well, I think I'll just give this a try, please leave me a thumbs up, a comment about how you're doing. 
I'd love to know. And subscribe to my channel. Oops, took up too much, took away too much. A little too much fever. that we are going to stop now and say we've had a good practice. I hope that you have learned a little bit of something on watercolors. I'm certainly learning as I'm doing and I hope that you will do the same. I'm starting to piddle. I have to stop. I'm particularly pleased with the outcome on the uh, the bud, even though we have a bloom here. I think it adds to the look of the bud. I have taken some liberties, but that is the point of the exercise. particularly pleased with our background because I don't want the background to be taking away from our watercolor practice. I'm going to be stopping now. I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to remove And I'm going to cut out this image and put it here the way we did. I did here as a frame of reference and a measure of the progress that I have been trying to make. I'm going to do a little framing on my piece the way I do here and label it just for me and date it. But bye for now.